Hello, everyone. My name is Qing Ling. Today, I will present this paper, Input Impedance Characterization of a Single Phase PFC in DQ Frame. The outline of this presentation includes introduction, PFC model in DQ Frame, PFC small signal impedance modeling, experimental verification, and conclusion. A data center power system is a typical power electronics based power system where the grid or backup generator supplies power through a three phase power distribution network for numerous power supply units, PSUs, which contains a single phase power factor correction, PFC, and an isolated DC DC converter. The dynamics interaction among the non ideal source and a great many converters may bring instability to the system, including low frequency oscillations, etc. Several Facebook data centers have been reported to suffer from low frequency resonance instability under a certain configuration of the distribution system. To better understand and avoid similar unstable phenomena, it's important to model and perform stability analysis of such systems. There are different kinds of methods for stability analysis, including eigenvalue analysis, loop gain analysis, and impedance space analysis, etc. The impedance space stability analysis method is widely adopted because the system internal parameters are not required in practice. This method can also be divided as two kinds, the linear time periodic methods, such as harmonics linearization, and linear time invariant method based on rotating DQ frame. The related theories of both kinds are well developed for three-phase balance systems. For three-phase unbalanced system or balance system with single-phase load analysis, based on the LTI theory, this paper adopts the virtual DQ frame modeling method. The content of this paper includes modeling and experimental verification of the input impedance of a PFC in DQ frame, analyzing the different control loops impact and showing the effectiveness of using the derived model for single phase system stability analysis. Next, I will introduce the concept of modeling a single phase PFC in a virtual DQ frame. A totem pole topology PFC converter is studied in this paper. A door loop control scheme is utilized and a continuous current mode operation is considered. For stability analysis, the frequency of interest is well below the switching frequency. Therefore, the switching frequency level components are ignored in the modeling by deriving the average model. For three-phase converter, a common method for small signal modeling is to model the converter in the DQ frame because it converts the operating point to DC value and makes the system model feasible to be linearized. For a single-phase PFC, a similar modeling method can be used by creating two virtual frames. So by phase shifting all the electrical variables in the original circuit by 120 degree and minus 120 degree. Virtual phase B and phase C circuits are created for the single phase PFC. In this model, the double line frequency ripples of the DC voltage of each circuit are ignored considering that their magnitude are much smaller than the DC voltage. Similarly, the third harmonics in the AC side is also ignored. The DC buses of the three circuits are, can be combined into one DC bus based on this assumption. And since the quantities of each phase circuit are simply shifted by 120 degrees from one phase to the other, the single phase circuit is bounded input, bounded output stable if and only if this artificial three-phase circuit is bounded input, bounded output stable. And then the Parks transform is applied to both the power stage circuit and the controllers of the artificial 
three-phase system to obtain the whole system model in the DQ frame. This is the circuit model in the DQ frame, and this is the controller model in the DQ frame. With the average model in the DQ frame derived, the next part I would like to present the PFC small signal impedance model in the DQ frame. With DC operating point in the DQ frame, the converter circuit average model can be linearized and becoming the small signal model shown here. This is the block diagram forming of this small signal model. To simplify the analysis, this small signal model doesn't include the AC side LC filter, which is added after calculating the converter impedance based on this small signal model. And a PFC converter with parameter showing in this table is given as an example. This figure shows the whole PFC converter's open loop impedance. Below certain frequency, the PFC impedance is dominated, and above that, the input filter impedance is dominated. For ZDD, a resonant point between um, the boost inductor and the DC capacitor omega n exists at low frequency. At very low frequency, the ZDD presents to be a resistor, and its gain depends on the input voltage and power. At low frequency, the ZDQ, ZQD, and ZQQ present to be the corresponding term of the boosting duct impedance in the DQ frame. At high frequency, there are two resonant frequency points resulted from the filter impedance in ZDD and ZQQ. At very high frequency, the total impedance presents to be the corresponding terms of the differential mode inductor DQ impedance. To recognize the current control's impact on the input impedance, it's assumed first that the input voltage phase doesn't have variation and the current reference phase is given manually. As shown in this figure, the block shadow in orange denotes the current loop's dynamics. The input impedance of the PFC can then be calculated using this equation. The um, TI is the current loop open loop gain. GCI describes the PR controller dynamics and GDEO represents the digital control delays dynamics. This figure showcases a PFC impedance in the open loop condition, the blue curve, and also with the only the current loop condition, the red curve. Compared with the open loop condition, adding the current loop eliminates the resonance between the DC capacitor and the boost inductor at around 200 Hz for ZDD and eliminates the resonance between the boost inductor and the differential mode capacitor at around 8 kilohertz for all four elements. While this high frequency resonance resulted from the input filter is not impacted because the current loop only controls the boost inductor current. Adding the current loop also results in resonance at the 120 hertz because of the PR controller. At very low frequency, the integrator effect of the PR controller is dominant. So an around 20 dB per decade reduction in the gain and the minus 90 degree phase can be observed in ZDD and ZQQ. If further considering the phase tracking dynamics, this equation can be used to calculate the imp input impedance which includes the block shadow in purple. So G theta is the transfer function from input voltage to current reference in metric format. The yellow curve in this figure shows the impedance after adding the input voltage tracking. The integrated effect of the current PR controller at low frequency is eliminated. And the PFC presents to be a resistor in both ZDD and ZQQ within the current loop's bandwidth. This characteristic can be explained using these vector diagrams because of the input voltage phase checking. A perturbation at BD would result in a response at ID. So ZDD presents to be a resistor. And for Q channel, the current magnitude is kept unchanged. So any voltage perturbation at the Q channel would result in the ID response, IQ response. Therefore, the ZQQ presents to be a resistor. 
After including the DC voltage control, the block shadow in green is added to the small signal model. And GCI presents to uh, the dynamics of the DC voltage controller. The input impedance can, can then be calculated using this equation. This figure shows the impedance results of the four scenarios without DC voltage controller and with different DC voltage control bandwidths, 6 hertz, 15 hertz, and 24 hertz. Adding the DC voltage control mainly impacts ZDD at low frequency and also ZDQ and ZQD because of the coupling effect. This is because the access is aligned with the original circuit input voltage vector. And because of the unity power vector control, the AC side power is delivered through the D channel to the DC channel. And having the DC voltage control also results in a negative resistor characteristic of the ZDD element at low frequency. With the increase of the DC loop bandwidth, the negative resistance characteristic maintains to a higher frequency. The last part is to study the cascaded DC-DC converter loads impact. This figure shows the PFC input impedance with different load types, a resistor load, a negative resistor load, and a full model of a DC-DC converter load, all with the same power. The overlap of the negative resistor load case and the DC-DC converter load case shows that simply using a negative resistor load can represent the dynamics of the cascaded DC-DC converters impact. Compared with the DC-DC uh, converter case, compared with the resistor load case, the DC-DC converter case, um, it caused a drop in the both the gain and base on the ZDD term, and also the ZDQ and ZQD term. This figure shows the PFC DC bandwidth um, impact in the DC DC converter load case. The increase of the bandwidth causes the magnitude drop point to be at the higher frequency range, but it's still around the voltage loop cutoff frequency. So, to have more insights on the cascaded DC DC converters impact shown in the previous slides, here the PFC DQ model is simplified. With unity power factor operation, the active power is transferred through the D channel. So here we can just focus on the D channel and ignore the coupling terms when studying the DC dynamics. And the current loop dynamics is ignored because it is much faster. And we are focusing on the low frequency range. With this simplification, the D channel model, including the DC dynamic, is shown here. Based on the circuit, the power stage and the controller equations can be written. By linearization, a small signal model can be derived. And with this three equation, a small signal impedance can be calculated. So this result shows, shows that the DC load type only impacts the damping coefficient of this left half plan zero. And compared with the resistor load case, the DC-DC converter with negative resistor characteristic, it caused this damping term to drop a decent amount. Therefore, it will cause a drop at the resonant frequency point. And this resonance is between the DC capacitor and the integrator term of the DC voltage PI controller. Also from this equation, this damping coefficient is also dependent on Kp and Ki term, which also explain the impact of the DC, uh, the PFC voltage bandwidth on the gain drop causes by the DC-DC converter, shown in the previous slide. To verify the effectiveness of using the PFC DQ impedance in stability analysis, a single phase system is started using the Simulink simulation. A single phase grid with certain line impedance supplies power for a single phase PFC with DC DC converter load. The stability of this system is assessed by applying the generalized Nyquist criterion to the minor loop gain 
here defined as the grid side impedance times the load side admittance in the DQ frame. And both are defined based on the virtual DQ frame method. The first case is a stable case. There are no encirclements of the minus one zero point. And this is the DC voltage waveform with no oscillations. For the second case, the line impedance is designed much higher um, and the system becomes unstable. The loci, loci here encircle the minus one zero point at around 0 0.7 Hertz. At the same time, a 0 0.7 Hertz oscillation is observed in the DC voltage and the system also collapses after a few seconds. Both frequency domain analysis match with the time domain results for these two cases. Therefore, the PFC DQ impedance modeling results is effective for using stability analysis of systems containing single phase PFC load. With the PFC DQ impedance analytical model, we also use experimental measurement to verify the accuracy of the derived model. This figure shows the single phase impedance measurement unit. The IMU is connected in series between the device on the test and a single phase AC source. So for each frequency uh, point, there are two um, linearly independent perturbations injected. And then the voltage and the current response at the PFC side are measured. The phase of the voltage V is tracked using a PLL. And with this angle, the voltage and current at virtual frame B and frame C are created with 120 degree phase shift. The three sets of signal are then transformed to DQ frame and there are small signal components are obtained. And then the small signals impedance can be calculated using this equation. The DQ impedance of the PFC is measured using the setup and the procedure mentioned in the previous slides. This figure overplots the modeling and experimental measurement results. And the modeling results match well with the experimental result except for around 120 Hertz, especially for the off diagonal term. This is because in the modeling process, the third harmonics components in the AC side are not considered in the model. While in the measurement, the third harmonics response resulted from the fundamental components through frequency coupling is added when measuring the response of the third harmonics perturbation. This figure shows that increasing the DC caps reduced the power stage third harmonics. Therefore, it reduced the difference between the measurement and the modeling results. In general, the mismatch for the ZDQ and ZQD are mainly due to system error because they are relatively small. This figure shows the modeling and measurement results of ZDD with 6 Hz and 17 Hz DT voltage loop bandwidth. The measurements result match well with the modeling result, thus verifying that an increase of the DC voltage loop gain extends the frequency range of the negative impedance characteristic. This figure shows the measurement results of a commercial PSC which contains a front end PFC and a cascaded DC DC converter load. Increasing power or reducing the input voltage results in a reduction of the impedance gain. And compare with the impedance of this figure of the PFC with the resistor load. The cascaded DC -D converter caused the PFC impedance to have an obvious gain dropped at a few hertz for ZDD and ZDQ and ZQD. So this verifies analysis we did in the previous section. To verify the effectiveness of using the PFC DQ impedance in the stability analysis, two tests are conducted in such a single phase system. So a PFC with DC, DC converter load is connected to a single phase source through some line impedance. The time domain test shows a stable operation of the first case. And there are no encirclements of the minus one zero point in the Nyquist plot. This plot is calculated using the measured impedance of both the source side and the load side. 
The second case exhibits has low frequency oscillations at around 2.7 Hertz. This Nyquist plot shows the encirclements of the minus one zero point at similar frequency range. So in both the case one and case two, the impedance-based stability analysis results match with the time domain operation. In conclusion, a single phase PFC converter dynamics is modeled using the virtual DQ frame method. And the cascaded DC DC converter loads is found to cause the gain in the phase of the ZDD to drop at around the PFC voltage loop cutoff frequency, which is potentially detrimental to the system stability. The modeled PFC DQ impedance is also verified that it can be used for stability analysis of a single phase system. But that's all I like to cover in this presentation. Thank you for your attention. Please feel free to provide any questions or comments.